A rain garden is a depressed area in the landscape designed to hold rainwater and allow it to seep back into the soil. Now this has a number of wonderful benefits, uh, mainly by keeping water on site. We're allowing it to be used by the trees, shrubs, and other plants in our landscape rather than flowing off away from our garden. And also we can use the rain garden to direct water in the landscape, which can help reduce erosion problems. Now, rain gardens also affect the larger water system by keeping rainwater on site and releasing less into our streams and creeks. Now, this can have wonderful impacts on the quality and quantity. By reducing the amount of water flowing into our streams and creeks, we're gonna have less sediment, less pollutants, and a lower volume of water flowing into our creeks and streams, which will reduce flooding. Joining me now is Kevin Gustafson with Project Blue Thumb, and Kevin's going to help me design a rain garden here in a residential landscape. So to get started, we need to locate this rain garden, and what are some of the parameters we want to think about in selecting a site? Well, when, you, uh, when it rains on your landscape, look to see where water is flowing on the landscape, and uh, think about where you could possibly trap that, that water. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, there's going to be a natural flow of mm -hmm you know, low spots where the water's moving and we can take advantage of those. Mm -hmm. right. um, what about downspouts and stuff? Are those going to come into play? Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. So one of the places where water often comes, you have a nice uh, area on top of your roof that collects water and sends it to the downspout. And uh, mm -hmm. where water comes off the downspout, that's where um, you can see pool, uh, streams of water where you can start to collect them. You could also collect water off of uh, paved surfaces. Mm -hmm. If they happen to um, flow onto your landscape, often they're designed to blow off on to the street. Right. Now another thing we want to think about is what happens to extra water. Sometimes we can't capture it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the landscape, if you, uh, if you have a really flat property, you may, not, you may be out of luck for putting in a rain garden, mm -hmm. but uh, if it slopes just even slightly, then you have the possibility of trapping it, holding it back with a berm, and then, but you want to think about where the water is going to go afterwards. So, um, you know, is there a place where the water will naturally flow and, and not cause a problem? Once we've selected a site, what about the size of our rain garden? How do we go about determining how big it needs to be? Well, a rule of thumb is about 5% of the area that it drains. So you could calculate the part of your roof that's draining and uh, figure out you know, at, at least 5% of the area of that is what could be beneficial. Mm -hmm. But really, whatever fits your landscape, if it's smaller than 5%, that's fine. If you have clay soils uh, that drain more slowly, then you know, a little bit bigger is just fine. Mm -hmm. um, we can you know, spread that water out Exactly, over a have a shallower um, depth with a, with a broader area. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this site. We have um, some roof drainage off of the house. Um, and actually we're in a situation where the hard surfaces actually drain into the landscape, which is good. And a little bit of slope coming out. Um, we do already have a river birch here. What can we consider? I, th I think there's a few options here when we're designing this. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, uh, when we first looked at this property, we, we looked at the far side of the house where it was quite flat and it really wasn't quite adequate for it's a very big rain garden. So this site was more suitable because it has a greater slope. And there's actually enough slope here to even put in a couple of pools. Okay. So um, you, know, you can imagine uh, you know, one here holding it back for the birch and then um, there's a little steeper slope here and you could have another section um, of a rain garden. Here so we're well. going to have kind of two tiers and the top will overflow a little bit into the bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, let's lay this out. Okay. Well, Kevin, back here we, we have certainly a couple of different op options with the rain garden. What are some of the decisions that we need to make? Well, right here, there's certainly a good depth where you could have a, a rain garden just between the swale here and in front of the tree. Mm -hmm. So the question really would be, do you want to have just one rain garden with, mm -hmm. the, with, the, um, with one pool, or do you want to include the tree? Mm -hmm. And this uh, birch would certainly be happy uh, with a little bit of extra water. Absolutely. So, um, so we talked to the homeowner, and they were happy with that option. So we thought if we put a second berm in, we could trap up uh, a little bit of water for that tree and then have it tear down to this area um, for a bigger, deeper pool. And of course, some of the considerations in that is how much area you want in turf and how much you want in the garden itself. Mm -hmm. And here the homeowner was happy to have less turf to mow, so mm -hmm. <laughs> the right. big garden worked out really well. Yes. 
Well, our next step is to remove this turf so we can build the rain garden. There's certainly a few different options. Um, we could use a turf cutter. Uh, we could hand dig it out. Um, and perhaps along the edge here is some herbicide. You know, I try to limit the herbicide, but there's a lot of gravel in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to having you back to help us uh, with the installation process. Thanks, I'm looking forward to it too.